Hello students, my name is Darshan Sarang. I am working as an assistant professor in SNPIT Umrakh Bardoli. Today I am going to deliver a brief lecture on MEBC subject that is materials and energy balance computation which comes under semester 3. In this lecture we will discuss about units and dimension. Now coming to the subject, its name is materials and energy balance computations. So from this name of this subject, we can conclude that we are going to do lots of calculations or computations in this subject. This subject is also known as stoichiometry. So materials and energy balance. So we will talk about material that is mass and energy. So the conversion of energy when there is a flow of mass. So we will calculate a, a computation related to the materials and energy. Now coming to the main topic, it is units. So units are of major two types, base units and derived units. Base units are the standard units which are the fundamentals such as units of length, units of mass, units of time. For example, unit of length is centimeter or meter or kilometer. Unit of mass is gram or kilogram and unit of time is second or hour or minute. So these are the base units and from these base units we can derive other units too. For example, if we multiply length with length, it will become area. If we multiply length with width with height, then it will become volume. So the unit of area will be meter square and unit of volume will be meter cube. Same way, for example, we talk about density. So unit of density is also derived from mass and volume because unit of density is kilogram per meter cube. Here we have discussed some units in various other methods also. Why we need to discuss so many uh, different types of units? Because uh, if we talk about uh, various countries, in all the countries, units are not same. For example, if we talk about India, we use meter as a unit of land. But if you talk about a European country, they will not use meter or centimeter. Instead, they will use foot or inches for the measurement of land. Same way, if we talk about mass, in India, we use kilogram or gram as a unit. But if you talk about European country, they measure it in the unit of pound. So the pound is the unit of mass in case of European country. If we talk about temperature, then various units are there. In India, we generally use temperature using Celsius as a unit. But in other countries, Fahrenheit is used. In some country, Kelvin is also used. And in some country, Rankine. 
degree Rankine is also used as unit of temperature. Now in the last column one term dimension is written. Now the dimension uh, here diamonds uh, in case of dimension length is denoted by capital L mass is denoted by capital M time is denoted by theta and temperature is denoted by capital T so all these were the base units as we discuss because these units are used to derive other units so next we will see the derived units or derived quantity the first is volumetric flow rate so amount of uh, any fluid flow in unit time is known as volumetric flow rate so its unit will be volume per time so it is meter cube per hour or smaller unit will be centimeter cube per second or we can use any unit which will uh, constitute volume and time meter cube per minute also you can use another unit of volume is liter so you can use liter per second also the second is volume as we discussed volume is the multiplication of length width and height so its unit will be meter cube but if we talk about liquids or gas then volume of the liquids or gas are measured in terms of liters so liter is also unit of volume then third one is the density as we discussed previously its unit is uh, density is the mass per volume so it will be kilogram per meter cube the th uh, fourth one is force so force is generally measured in terms of newton but the smaller unit is dyne another unit of force is kilogram force the fifth one is pressure now pressure is measured in various units generally in india we measure pressure in terms of atmosphere or bar but its si unit is pascal and pascal is the ratio of newton to meter square so the unit of pressure is also newton per meter square another unit of pressure is mmhg that is height of mercury in millimeter another unit is psi that is pound per square inch another unit of pressure is mmwc that is height of water column in terms of millimeter then pascal newton per meter square all these are the units of pressure there are various units of pressure when there is vacuum we use tor as a pressure so when the pressure is below an atmosphere then it is called as vacuum so it is one kind of pressure only and its unit is tor then the next one is work which is a kind of energy so its unit will be joule the smaller unit is erg another unit is btu another unit is calorie so here heat work all these are the form of energy so joule calorie erg btu all these are the units of energy enthalpy that is also one kind of energy so again its unit will be joule okay next now we will talk about some unit conversion 
why we need unit conversion because as we discussed in some country units are measured in different way and in uh, india we need different unit to measure some quantity so to balance that we need to convert that unit into our desired unit so in this first example we have here press pressure of two atmosphere and we need to convert these two atmosphere pressure into mmhg so there is one conversion formula which says that one atmosphere pressure equal to 760 mmhg this is universal rule so we can easily calculate that if one atmosphere equal to 760 mmhg then two atmosphere will equal to 2 into 760 mm hg so it will be 1520 mm hg that is your answer number 1 the second example of unit conversion we need to convert volumetric flow rate of 2 meter cube per second to the liter per second so here we have unit of 2 meter cube per second and we need to convert it to the liter per second so we know that 1 meter cube is equal to 1000 liter so 2 meter cube will be 2 into 1000 liter so it will be 2000 liter per second i hope all these things are easily understood next now this subject is related to chemical engineering so we will further go in detail so if we go in detail and if we talk about chemical then this atomic weight molecular weight moles and all this come into picture so what is atomic weight the atomic weight is it is the weight of an element and it is the mass of the atom based on the scale that assigns carbon a mass of exactly 12 so atomic weight uh, if we see in simple manner suppose we have h2o so h2o is made up of two atom uh, three atoms two hydrogen atom plus one oxygen atom so the atomic weight we will consider of hydrogen and we will also consider atomic weight of oxygen because this h2o is made up of three atoms two hydrogen atom plus one oxygen atom so it is made up of three atoms and out of uh, this hydrogen and oxygen both hydrogen and oxygen have different atomic weight next comes molecular weight so again same example if we talk about h2o then this h2o is a single molecule h2o is also known as a single molecule which is comprised of two hydrogen atom and one oxygen atom so if we calculate molecular weight of h2o it will be 2 into atomic weight of hydrogen plus 1 into atomic weight of oxygen which is equal to 18 so the at molecular weight of h2o is 18 g per mole next comes the definition of mole or gram mole so it is used to specify the amount of chemical compound it is defined as the mass in grams of substance that is equal numerically to its molecular weight so the definition of gram mole will be equal to it is the ratio of weight of that particular component divided by the molecular weight of that particular component but we are taking it in grams because it is gram moles similar way if we talk about kilogram moles 
then we will consider the weight of that particular component in kilogram or in simple manner we can also say that a mole of a component is defined as the amount of substance equal to its molecular weight so for example if we again talk about H2O then the molecular weight of H2O is 18 gram per mole so it represent that is 18 gram H2O is equal to 1 gram mole H2O in similar way if we uh, take 18 kilogram of H2O which is equivalent to 18 kilo mole of H2O I hope this is understood so now we see the how to calculate molecular weight of different component the first component here is H2SO4 that is sulfuric acid so here H2SO4 is a molecule which is comprised of seven atoms how seven atoms so it is comprised of two hydrogen atom plus one sulfur atom plus four oxygen atom so together these seven atom will form one single molecule of H2SO4 now the atomic weights of all these H that is hydrogen S that is sulfur and O that is oxygen is known to us the atomic weight of hydrogen is 1 atomic weight of sulfur is 32 and atomic weight of oxygen is 16 so the molecular weight of H2SO4 will be 2 into atomic weight of hydrogen plus 1 into atomic weight of sulfur plus 4 into atomic weight of oxygen so it will become 98 so if you take 98 gram then it will become 1 mole and if you consider 98 kilogram then it will become 1 kilo mole similarly you can also calculate molecular weight of Na2CO3 that is sodium carbonate so again this component sodium or compound sodium carbonate is consist of two sodium atoms plus one carbon atom plus three oxygen atom so the atomic weight of sodium is 23 atomic weight of carbon is 12 and atomic weight of oxygen is 16 so the molecular weight of sodium carbonate will become 106 similar way KMnO4 if we calculate molecular weight of KMnO4 it is co uh, consists of 6 atoms 1 potassium 1 manganese and 4 oxygen potassium per manganate so for potassium the atomic weight is 39 for manganese the atomic weight is 5 and for oxygen it is 16 so it will become 158 gram per mole the next example how many kilograms of ethane are there in 210 kilo mole so here if we see we have 210 210 kilo mole of ethane so ultimately we want to or we need to convert this kilo mole into kilogram we have 210 kilo mole of ethane and we want to convert this 210 kilo mole of ethane into kilograms of ethane so now we have atomic weight of our uh, molecular uh, formula what is the molecular formula or chemical formula of ethane that is C2H6 2 atoms of carbon plus 6 atoms of hydrogen so to convert this we need molecular weight of ethane and molecular weight of ethane is equal to you can see here it is calculated 30 
so from the formula we can convert kilomole into kilogram so kilomole equal to weight of component that is ethane divided by the molecular weight of ethane so now to calculate the kilogram of ethane you can take molecular weight and multiply it with kilomole weight of ethane so 210 into 30 so it will become 6300 so the, it will become 6300 kilogram of ethane so for now we have seen the atomic weight the molecular weight the conversion of atomic weight uh, into mo molecular weight then again conversion of molecular weight into mass of the component and in previous slide we discussed about the base units we also discussed about the derived units and which are the dimension used for these units are also discussed okay thank you again we will meet in second lecture